medical benefits and uh, toxic toxicity. Firstly, please allow me to introduce our center briefly. So in our uh, country, we have uh, three uh, different national centers for nanoscience. Uh, our center in, uh, located in Beijing is focused on the basic research. And another two uh, ones in Tianjin and Shanghai, they focus on the uh, commercialization and uh, 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 transfer uh, for clinical transfer. And uh, in our center, we have two uh, CASP laboratory. And uh, my, uh, I belong to this uh, uh, key laboratory uh, for biomedical effect of nanomaterial and nano safety. Um, actually, uh, our location in Beijing, uh, we are in the Zhuanchun uh, area, and uh, our neighborhood, uh, we have Peking University, and Tsinghua University, and other institutes from the cars. So it's like uh, uh, we are in the center of this golden triangle. <laughs> so we are very lucky we can collaborate with other institutes and universities. Uh, this is a um, uh, courage research in my group. Uh, we focus on the uh, interaction of uh, nanomaterials and biology systems. That's uh, my talk today. Uh, based on this uh, uh, information, we also do the original design of functionalized nanomaterial for cancer treatment. At the meantime, we also develop as a methodologies for detection of nanomaterials in uh, biology system like high throughput, in situ, real time, and in vivo detection. So this is a, uh, a group of uh, members, and my student, uh, Jin Long Tao, he's sitting in the audience. Um, so this is uh, my talk today. Um, so why we uh, need to consider the benefit and the toxicity? Actually, uh, toxicity um, is the uh, major uh, restriction for the clinical application. So that's why uh, we put a lot of effort at that. Uh, so today I will um, uh, focus on this talk. Um, uh, the, we uh, established the uh, systemic platform to study the fate and the behavior of nanomaterial in biological system. Uh, we look at the pathway and the uh, intracellular trafficking and also the uh, metal and the metal oxide nanoparticles, their fate and their dissolution in the in vivo and in vitro. And then we look at the biological responses. We use uh, different uh, omics techniques like uh, protein omics, metal omics, and so on. So uh, as you well know, the nano uh, technology has been applied in many fields, especially for cosmetics, medicine, electronics, energy. It's very uh, uh, hot topics. So why we should consider their toxicity uh, potentials? Actually, um, how to maximize the benefit and minimize the risk is our task. So we need to think about the, the risk, the risk to the, our human uh, health and to the environment. environment. Uh, however, uh, if we look at the risk, risk, uh, is the hazard, we need to uh, identify the hazard, and then we need to identify exposure. Uh, actually, risk is uh, 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 dependent on the hazard and exposure levels. If you look at uh, this uh, uh, figure, actually, uh, if, the, uh, uh, if the safety level is higher and the exposure level is lower, so it is safe. We don't need to think about. Just like if the, the shark is very dangerous. Yeah, but if you have no chance to uh, contact shark, then you are safe. So, I mean, um, for the nano uh, materials, so we need to consider what is the safety level and what is the exposure levels. So you need to take balance for that. Uh, for the nano materials, uh, nano medicine uh, development for clinical trials, uh, as a uh, professor uh, introduced uh, in the morning, uh, we know uh, the nanomaterial development uh, take place one or two years, and um, uh, application development in the lab, in the in vitro levels, it takes uh, several years, 
And then for the preclinical animals, that is takes a longer. So in this case, the uh, toxicity evaluation uh, will be the major task. Yeah. And uh, here, uh, this slide just show you uh, what the preclinical development uh, needed, such as uh, toxicinetics, pharmacokinetic studies, safety ph uh, pharmacology, uh, the acute toxicity, the um, uh, the uh, longer uh, long term uh, exposure toxicity studies, the local tolerance studies, gene uh, genotoxicity, toxicity, carcinogenetics for long term exposure, and uh, even the rep uh, reproduction toxicity studies. So all of them belong to their pre clinical development. And uh, why the nanomaterials and nanomedicine are uh, received a very uh, high concern. Uh, as you can see, uh, actually the um, nanoparticles, their size uh, is very similar to the uh, cellular organelles and the uh, macro, uh, macro molecules. So how they affect in the body is very important because their uh, size are similar and their, property, uh, their properties are different. And uh, uh, we know uh, for nanomaterials, there's um, different uh, physical chemical properties, like the size, composition, protein absorption, because they are uh, uh, larger surface uh, areas, they are easy to uh, bind the uh, macro uh, molecules like a protein and nucleic acid and lipids. And the uh, nanoparticles are easy to form agglomerates and uh, uh, in the uh, biological uh, mediums. And uh, nanomaterials we can produce in different shape, as, uh, is different aspect ratio, and they show uh, different hydrophobicity and hydrophobicity. And uh, uh, in different mediums, uh, their stability uh, are different. Some materials are very uh, stable, some are uh, easily to get oxidized or degraded. Uh, in, in biological system. So this is um, our priorities, what we um, considered for the, um, uh, for the uh, to study the nanomaterial in biology system, such as uh, uh, different exposure way and their uh, kinetics, uh, like uh, absorption, the uh, distribution, metabolize, and the uh, excretion from body, we call ADME, and how to visualize the biodistribution over time, and how to quantify uh, quantification of nanomaterial in biological system. And if nanomaterial can uh, cross different uh, barriers like a BBB in the body, and uh, we need to know how their uh, speciation, how their structure uh, uh, changes in, in C2, and of course the toxicology responses. So this is an uh, overall uh, view of uh, uh, how we did in our lab. We firstly, uh, to identify the uh, exposure, we look at the release scenarios, uh, both uh, occupational and consumer exposure. And then we look at the exposure pathway. Uh, we can according different uh, uh, pathway to establish the animal and in vitro uh, exposure models. And then we quantify uh, the cellular uptake and uh, ADME in vivo. Then we look at the uh, cellular effects and the systemic effects in vivo. And more importantly, all of this data uh, uh, provide our information uh, to calculate the occupational exposure limits. So this is really uh, important for, the, for their clinical applications. Um, the first important thing is we uh, establish uh, different uh, um, analytical uh, techniques to correct nanoparticles in a biological system, in, uh, like in cells and animals. So we uh, mostly we uh, use uh, synchrotron radiation-based techniques, such as uh, uh, DARPS, uh, CD, uh, and um, uh, and the micro uh, microbeam X-ray fluorescence. 
So to, uh, we, we also use the uh, uh, radio labeling isotope to follow the nanoparticles in vivo. So the first thing is the um, uh, nanoparticle protein interaction. Uh, we know uh, when uh, nanoparticles get into the blood, uh, their surface are not there. It's very easy to uh, bind different uh, blood proteins. And uh, this uh, binding uh, will influence the protein structure and function. And may uh, induce microphage uptake, uh, induce uh, blood coagulation, uh, protein aggregation, and even complement activation. Uh, so this is just give you an example. Uh, this is the annual report uh, by uh, American uh, Society of Cancer uh, Organization. So uh, they, uh, they uh, last year they have a report on nano uh, medicine. Uh, they give a title of Power of the Small. And they also list uh, several uh, nanomaterials for cancer treatment and uh, uh, imaging. Uh, this is a gold carbon and gold nanorod, uh, iron oxide for, 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 for MI image. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy, actually uh, my study also involved, uh, included these uh, uh, materials. Um, just as uh, uh, reported by Professor Shrin, uh, the MIR near-infrared light in, uh, mediated um, cancer therapy uh, is uh, uh, both uh, uh, photothermal therapy and ear and the NIR image is uh, is very important because the NIR light they have a deeper pen uh, penetration through their uh, skin and the tissues. Uh, they can even uh, deeper as uh, ten uh, centimeters. So it's good for uh, imaging and uh, uh, thermal therapy. So uh, as an example, we uh, recently designed the, uh, this nano composite. We put gold nanorod inside and uh, captured with um, uh, gadolinium as an MRI image. And then on the surface, we, uh, we use HA. Uh, this is the uh, HA enzyme target for the uh, cancer tissues. So through this uh, design, we can make a uh, uh, image and the thermal and chemical therapy in one system. And another uh, example is we use a uh, uh, carbon uh, nanodots. Because in the carbon um, uh, carbon nanodots, it can absorb NIR light and do uh, and produce the free radicals that can uh, reverse the resistant cancer cells in in vivo. So. Uh, so when we look at this uh, uh, therapy, firstly we, uh, we look at how they uh, interact with the proteins. So here is the um, uh, carbon nanotubes. We found very interestingly, if we use uh, um, if we compare several uh, blood proteins, you can see here their binding mode and the binding capacity are different. And uh, the uh, BFG. Uh, this is a um, blood uh, fibrosis. They have a higher capacity to bind with uh, uh, carbon nanotubes because they are uh, amino acid. Uh, they can form pi pi staking on the surface. And this um, blood binding can reduce, the, uh, can reduce the toxicity. So this is a really uh, uh, interesting. And, and this year we uh, edited one book by uh, Wiley, a publisher, uh, you can, if you want to learn more, uh, we have uh, more details for the biomedical application and, uh, and the toxicology of carbon nanomaterials. And this is the case of uh, gold nanorod. Um, as you know, uh, gold nanostructure are very hot. Uh, uh, each year has uh, several thousand papers about that. And then we also found if uh, gold nanorod uh, 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 meet with uh, uh, proteins. It can uh, the protein can immediately uh, absorb on the surface. So you can see the layer, uh, uh, the top layer, increase. And if we do the 
uh, molecular dynamic si uh, simulation, you can see actually the uh, protein discharged and uh, expose the sulfur atom to bind to the uh, gold. So it can form a gold sulfur bond on the surface. And the uh, synchrotron radiation X-ray absorption uh, spectroscopy and SD confirm this uh, binding. And more importantly, this uh, protein absorption can facilitate their uh, inter internalization. And, uh, and then we use um, uh, microbeam X-ray uh, fluorescence. This technique allows us to do the multi-elemental measurement. So you can see the different uh, element uh, matching at the same time. So you can, we can see here gold is always uh, has a similar trend with the sulfur and, uh, and the phosphorus because they can, uh, that suggests the, uh, uh, the coated, coated gold can uh, get into the cells together. And uh, then we develop another uh, single cell uh, techniques. This is uh, based on the ICPMS. Um, uh, in these techniques, we can detect uh, single cells. We use a uh, microfluid uh, to form the single cell on, the, uh, uh, on this uh, plate, and then use the ice, uh, laser blades there's a ablation ICPMS to detect the uh, gold uh, content. So you can see the detection limit is very low. Uh, we can detect uh, nine gold nanoparticles per cell. Another case is um, uh, gadolinium fluorine. We have uh, uh, studied these particles for over uh, almost 15 years. And we found these uh, uh, fluorine particles have very uh, interesting properties. It can uh, inhibit tumor growth, and uh, it can activate the tor like receptor signaling pathway and activate in immune immune uh, immune system in vivo. And you can see here. Uh, it can uh, induce the dendritic cells mat uh, maturation and release uh, different cytokines. And also, uh, we use this um, uh, these two uh, fluorine, uh, fluorines to treat uh, uh, HIV vaccine. We use them as um, a nano angulant. And you can see here, it can uh, increase the immune. Uh, it can increase the uh, antigen uh, immunities in vivo. This is a, a mice study. So this is a really, uh, really interesting. And then further, we uh, tried on the uh, cancer cells. So firstly, we uh, activate microphage and then uh, use the transveil to catch with, uh, uh, with uh, tumor cells. So tumor cells in the upper list and microphage in the, uh, in the lower list. So the uh, stimulated microfish can kill the tumor cells. And, uh, and we also use this um, activate uh, microfish to uh, inject it mice. It can uh, against the tumor metastasis. So this is a, a really interesting, we, we want to find why. If the uh, particles can end, get into the uh, immune cells, Actually, uh, for the uh, fullerene and gallium fullerene, it's very difficult to detect in vivo because it's a carbon cage. So uh, for the gallium uh, fullerene, in this case, we uh, use uh, uh, another technique. It's also based on the synchrotron radiation. So we use a, a soft X-ray spectral microscopy. These techniques, we can do the uh, near ace X-ray absorption structure analysis, and then we can uh, also use a scanning transmission X-ray uh, uh, microscopes. So taking these two uh, techniques together, so we can give a very clear um, single cell image. So this is a, a transmission uh, image, and this is a, with a, a X-ray uh, absorption. So you can see. 
the gadolinium uh, distribution uh, in the cell, in the cytosol, but not in, uh, uh, not in the nucleus. So this kind of um, uh, single cell analysis can provide us uh, information how it affects in, in uh, cells and in the immune cells. Um, uh, the, the two techniques I just showed you is based on the 2D analysis. However, if we need to, if we need to know the exact location in the cells, the 2D uh, mapping is not enough. So uh, we then uh, developed the 3D uh, mapping. This is uh, based on the nano CT. So we uh, use, uh, currently for this technique, we cannot do the real time. We cannot do the living cells. Currently, we, we use the uh, fixed cells, and uh, but we can do the uh, in situ uh, CT. Uh, here, I just give you an example for the uh, nano silver. I skip this. Uh, for the nano silver uh, study, why we are so interested? Because uh, the toxicity of uh, um, nano silver always uh, uh, has a different. Uh, uh, opinion. It is coming from the iron or coming from the nanoparticles. So that's why uh, we involved in one uh, EU project. Uh, in this project, we uh, use a different coated uh, nano silver to compare their stability and their dissolution uh, rate and uh, how they uh, uh, how they uh, transformation in the vivo. So uh, each lab. Uh, down the different uh, parts involved in toxic toxicity evaluation. So my lab, we do the um, the uh, cellular uptake. We use a different cell line. Uh, actually, a very interesting. Uh, different cell lines, their uptake capacity is, is different. And you can see here the THP1 derived macrophage. They have a higher uh, uptake. Uh, highest uptake, but their uh, LD50 is low, so the toxicity is also higher. However, uh, you can see uh, this is a HEP G2 and uh, this is a UMAX. Uh, their uh, their um, uptake is lower, but their LD50 is also uh, low. Their toxicity is also low. But you can see here this is um, uh, HBE, is a human branchial epithelial cells. Even their uptake is low, but the toxicity is high. So um, each uh, different cell line, they have um, different uh, sensitivity for the uh, nanomaterials. And this is the same. Uh, this is the same. Uh, same. Uh, this is the same uh, cell, uh, cell line, but uh, we use a different coating. So you can see uh, the coating also influence their cellular uptake, and. Uh, also influence their uh, toxicity. Uh, as you can see here, this is a PEG uh, coating. PEG coating show the less toxicity. This is a, uh, uh, as, uh, this is a, I think this is a reasonable because the PEG is um, approved by uh, FDA can be used uh, for the drug, uh, drug formulation. And then we compare the different uh, uh, distribution in, in mice. In, so you can see here, uh, actually, uh, for the uh, same size uh, 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 silver nanoparticles, if their coating are different, uh, we compare the citrate PEG, PVT, and the uh, branchial PEI. So their uh, distribution and their excretion from the liver, from the spleen, and the, and the uh, kidney are quite different. So. Uh, uh, so in, uh, from this uh, result, we can see the PG uh, coatings uh, more safe to the cells and the, to the uh, to the mice. However, if we compare the uh, silver iron, uh, the toxicity, always the silver ions has a higher toxicity to, to cells. Uh, here uh, we show the free radical. Uh, this is the DNA uh, adders, and this is the DNA damaged. Uh, product. This is biomarker, uh, and uh, also the microlithium formation. All, in all of these biomarkers, the silver ions are higher than uh, 
uh, nanoparticles. So what's the reason? And then we look at the uh, localization by, uh, by using uh, TEM. So you can see here, um, uh, the nanoparticles can be uh, uptake by cells very quickly and mostly uh, located in the lysosome. And uh, we then uh, look at the uh, exocytosis uh, process. Actually, the nanoparticles can be removed by cells. Uh, 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 when they remove the uh, cells, it forms like an uh, exosome uh, particles. You can see here very clearly. And uh, now uh, we want to know uh, the full information of uh, silver nanoparticle at uh, uh, single cell le levels. And so we uh, collaborated with um, Beijing synchrotron radiation facilities. So this is um, uh, nano CT facilities. Uh, uh, the most important part is here. Uh, we have uh, set up a special uh, platform for single cell. Uh, here we can uh, give a 360 degree uh, image for, for a single cell. The detection limit can be uh, 50 nanometers. So for the uh, silver nanoparticle, we can get a um, uh, contrast image. So here uh, we compare the uh, single cell image uh, the intensity and the, with the ICPMS. This is a quantitative uh, uh, data. And here, uh, uh, actually, uh, you can see here, uh, after 24 hours uh, uptake, uh, this is a uh, silver uh, content in the cells, and this is in the single cell. If you compare to the control, the intensity is quite high. And after 12 hours exocytosis, it, the signal uh, decreased. And after 40, uh, 48 hours, uh, is, uh, the intensity uh, decreased a lot. So uh, this is uh, quite um, in agreement with the ICP uh, MS result. And here I want to show you the um, 3D uh, movies. So uh, you can see very clearly how the silver particles located. They are not in the nuclear, in, in, they are in the cells. Because I use the, 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 the big particles of red color as the uh, marker outside the cells. So you can see uh, very clearly uh, the, the particles distribution inside. And then we can take each, uh, each slice. Yeah, so through this technique, we can compare the uh, 2D and 3D uh, distributions. So uh, you can see uh, very clearly how they are distrib di uh, distributed. Yeah. So we can take out uh, each, uh, each position to show the details. And then uh, we need to know how they degraded in the cells. Uh, we use um, X-ray absorption spectroscopy. Uh, we uh, detect the cells at a different time. So you can see the elemental silver forms are uh, decreased. And then the uh, silver oxygen form uh, firstly increased and then decreased. And finally, they form a silver sulfur form in inner cells. Um, and then we, uh, we know uh, in, the, in, the, in the cells, we have a lot of uh, proteins, they are responsible for the metal transport, transportation. So we look at the methanocyline and other ABCC proteins, DM, uh, DMT proteins. Yeah, we can see only uh, methanocyline, their expression increased. So this uh, suggests that uh, methanocyline is responsible for removing silver ions in, in, uh, in the cells. So we then uh, look at the uh, metrocellular, uh, the, the, their uh, CD uh, spectrum after incubation with uh, uh, silver ions. So you can see their uh, after binding, their uh, uh, their spectrum change. 
So all of these uh, techniques can give us a uh, um, full story how uh, how the silver nanoparticles behave in the in the cells. And based on uh, this study, we uh, we can um, calculate the exposure limit. I think this is uh, really important for the medical applications. Um, we use the uh, MPPD software to calculate the human uh, possible uh, uh, exposure limit, and also compare with the uh, uh, with the present. Uh, limits uh, reported by other uh, organizations. Uh, in addition to uh, 2D and 3D uh, image, we also develop in vivo uh, image. We need to know the, uh, the, the, the nanomaterial in vivo. For, for this study, uh, we use uh, uh, quantum dots as a model uh, nanomaterials. And uh, we uh, select uh, C. elegant as a model uh, model animals because uh, they are so small. Their body length is uh, one millimeter. It's very suitable for the synchrotron radiation uh, image. So we compare the different uh, type of quantum dots with the core shell structure, uh, different uh, surface coating, and different composition. Uh, uh, this is a um, uh, fluorescent the image of quantum dots uh, in the uh, in the full C elegans and the, in some parts. Uh, by the confocal image, we can see the uh, cells in the uh, in the C elegans. And uh, as we know, uh, the quantum dots is uh, the fluorescent fluorescent is easily bleached in vivo. So, but their um, but their uh, toxicity is also always confused us. So we try to use a synchrotron uh, radiation X-ray fluorescence and uh, X-ray absorption spec uh, spectroscopy. These two techniques are uh, together. Uh, you can see here um, for the uh, for the uh, twelve uh, exposure, we can see the fluorescence. The uh, civilian uh, and the zinc, these two elements on the composition element in quantum dots, they uh, they are image merge uh, very well. But if you look at a longer exposure, here is the um, uh, optical uh, fluorescence image. You can you cannot see the fluorescence here, but you can see the um, uh, composition element uh, like the civilian and the zinc here. They are very high. So what's the reason we cannot see the fluorescence here? Then we look at the uh, absorption to see the structure. Uh, you can see the, uh, this part, their uh, X-ray absorption spectral are different from the original, uh, original materials. So this uh, result show uh, that the quantum dots can be oxidized in vivo. So that can explain why quantum dots can produce uh, toxicity in vivo. And our further cellular studies and uh, can confirm that. Uh, after um, uh, exposure, we can see uh, the uh, uh, for cells, uh, the, uh, their DNA uh, and their di uh, cell division are destroyed. We can see very clearly here there's a um, uh, multi polar spindles formation. <coughs> and we also look at the Aurona A protein. This is a um, this is an important protein for the cell division. So you can see here uh, this is a uh, this is a cadmium uh, chloride as a control. After two uh, quantum dots exposure, their uh, their expression increased incre uh, increased uh, just as the uh, cadmium ions. So that means the academy of uh, quantum dots can be degraded in, in the cells and then induce the expression of aroma. And then we also look at the uh, cell cycles, which confirms that uh, um, quantum dots exposure can induce the cell uh, division problems. And the, the, uh, the uh, metrocellular proteins also increase as, just as the uh, uh, 
this is the, uh, just as the cadmium chloride. So all of uh, these data uh, proved that uh, cadmium uh, selenium pentanols can be degraded. And we uh, summarize our uh, techniques uh, for nanotoxicology uh, in this review, chemical and review. Uh, this is uh, published uh, three years ago. And two years ago, we uh, continued this um, uh, techniques. Uh, we have proposed a nanometanolomics. So that means we uh, uh, focus on the uh, metal related nanomaterials. And then uh, last year, uh, we uh, this is a more um, on the um, uh, nano, uh, medical nano uh, materials. So if you have uh, interest, you can uh, get more details for these techniques uh, in this review papers. Uh, do I have time? Yes. Okay. Uh, the last part I want to show you is um, uh, biological responses. Uh, actually, um, because uh, <clears throat> we uh, we don't know uh, what kind of information is enough for the toxic uh, toxicology evaluation. So nowadays, there's a different omics techniques has been involved uh, for this uh, study to find the exposure biomarkers and the effects biomarkers using uh, systemic uh, techniques. So. Uh, uh, from the exposure to the uh, uh, to the human exposure, so uh, we can con uh, consider the different uh, uh, pathway. So uh, after exposure, some um, the, the the cells and the organ will have some exposed uh, will have some uh, responses to that, and some molecular ini uh, initiate events will happen. So we should. So this is a, at a very earlier stage. So we need to find uh, what's the earlier biomarkers for this uh, exposure. And uh, uh, in our study, we uh, find uh, uh, this um, ER stress as a earlier exposure uh, biomarkers. Because uh, the ER stress, um, it is the initial response to the uh, nanomaterials. Uh, nano and also this ER stress uh, can be recovered if the exposure is not uh, so high. But people, uh, most uh, reference, they look at apoptosis. However, apoptosis is a uh, final step. Is um, uh, this process is not uh, reversible. So for the um, uh, toxicity uh, evaluation, now uh, it's focused on these uh, stress responses, the earlier stage uh, responses. So uh, in our study, we try to develop this um, uh, ER stress as a biomarker. And uh, we also uh, use uh, the genomics, proteomics, and uh, um techniques to find the uh, other biomarkers. Uh, however, as you know, uh, for the nano uh, materials, they have a, a quite different uh, physical chemical properties. For example, for carbon nanotubes, if uh, you use a different lens, if you use a different uh, um, surface uh, functionalization, and uh, even the uh, same uh, carbon nanotube, but produced by different uh, company. Their property, uh, their uh, uh, properties are different. So if you consider all these uh, properties, that will be uh, many many factors. So uh, we uh, we participate uh, one uh, validation studies. Uh, Coverage with uh, UCLA, uh, Brown University, and the uh, EU GLC's, uh laboratory in uh, Italy, and two component and two components. So they per, uh, we uh, we compare the uh, toxicities uh, during the same set of uh, carbon nanotubes. So uh, 
we can validate the uh, protocols and the methodologies to 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 to, to confirm uh, the protocols are, are good to evaluate the toxicity. However, the if we consider all of these uh, properties, the uh, some uh, the samples will be really really high. It's a huge work. So uh, we develop high throughput screening and high content screening uh, method. Uh, in this case, uh, we use a NRF2 uh, and NF kappa B. This is the two important pathway for the earlier uh, exposure. Uh, we use these uh, two genes as a reporter, uh, and then we can uh, use this um, uh, high throughput screening uh, facility to look at uh, uh, many, many different nanomaterials at a very uh, efficient way. And uh, then we collaborate with uh, Dave, Professor Dave Rinker from uh, Australia, and he used a QSAC to anal analyze uh, which properties will be the dominant factors to determine their toxicity. Uh, this is a one example. We analyzed the different uh, uh, zinc oxide nanoparticles. Uh, we uh, actually, for this uh, study, we have analyzed uh, more than uh, 50 samples uh, with different size, shape, doping, and uh, manufacturing uh, process to, uh, to, to find uh, how the toxicity coming from. And uh, for the uh, inorganic uh, nanomaterials, uh, actually the current uh, uh, challenge is that uh, there are long-term accumulation in the internal organs, uh, such as liver, spleen, and <coughs> kidney. They cannot remove from the, uh, from the body. So uh, we also look at uh, why they are um, accumulated in the liver. And we, uh, this is a review um, a paper uh, three years ago. We actually, in our lab, we uh, try to compare the different size, which size can be uh, accumulated in liver and the spleen and the, yeah. And actually, uh, this is highly dependent on the, uh, on their barrier. For example, for the, uh, for the kidney, uh, usually, uh, we know the, the kidney, uh, their uh, inhibition uh, size is about uh, 8 nanometer. If the size below the 8 nanometer, it can be eliminated from, from the kidney. Uh, so here's an example. We compare the different size uh, gold nanomaterials uh, uh, from the 3 nanometer to, uh, seven, uh, to 50 nanometers. So you can see here, uh, very interestingly, this is a golden nanoplaster. These two clusters, they can remove from the kidney very quickly. And this is a urine. So you can see uh, most of them can be uh, re uh, removed from the urine. But for the uh, gold, uh, bigger size, the uh, spherical gold nanoparticles and gold nanorod, they can uh, stay in the liver for a long time. Even here, we do uh, 24, uh, 28 days. And it cannot uh, remove from blood and urine. And this is, um, uh, uh, we use a, a, a tumor mi a tumor bearing mice model. So we can see if uh, we uh, coat it nanorod with uh, PEG and BSA, it can prolong the uh, blood circulation time. And, uh, and also increase their, uh, increase their uh, retention in tumor tissues. Uh, another example is um, uh, bismuth sulfide. Uh, you know the uh, bis uh, bismuth uh, bis uh, has the highest X-ray attenuation uh, efficient, so it can be used for the CT image. So firstly, we prepare the uh, the bismuth sulfide nanorod. It can give a very good CT image and also for acoustic image. But their uh, retention in the liver uh, tissues are really high. 
So the, uh, you can see very clearly the uh, vascular uh, structure in the tumor tissues. So later we uh, prepared the ultra small uh, nano dots, the copper docket uh, bismuth sulfide. So this is uh, interesting. It can uh, uh, keep the high CT image, but uh, this small uh, nanodots can be removed from the ring, uh, from the kidney, and it can be uh, uh, degraded also. Uh, so uh, this uh, design can uh, can solve the problem, uh, can solve the problem, problem, and re reduce the uh, the liver uh, retention. Maybe it has a more uh, promising application uh, in the future. And uh, uh, we also use this um, uh, ERSJS as a biomarker to uh, compare the uh, toxicity of different uh, MI contrast a uh, agents. So this is a collaboration with uh, Professor Han Yang. And uh, here, uh, this is actual small uh, ion oxide, and this is a magnesium oxide uh, nanoparticles, and this is a commercially available GDI. And you know the Gadolinia uh, GDI uh, can cause the um, um, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. So actually, in our study, we will also find uh, GDI has a, a higher uh, toxicity to, to the mice. So uh, uh, through our uh, established biomarker, we can uh, compare the different um, uh, nano uh, probes uh, can give uh, can provide some uh, useful information. Uh, so actually, uh, our uh, goal is try to uh, get information for their benefits and the safety. So uh, we try to uh, make it safe by design uh, to reduce the risk to re reduce the uh, toxicity. But this is a, a long way to go. Uh, I summarize my talk here. Uh, for the nanomaterials, there's a lot of uh, different uh, properties we, we should uh, consider for their toxicity. Uh, as you can see here, uh, size, shape, composition, uh, surface charge, uh, crystal structure, and then strength, uh, strength is, and also the uh, stability uh, and the degradation and the solubility uh, in, in biosystem. So all of these uh, properties will influence their uh, toxicity and also their phage in, in vivo and in, in vitro. Uh, I want to thank my collaborators and the foundings and also my uh, students, my collaborators. Uh, thank you. in uh, for research in nanomedicine in terms of the medical